What up, what up, what up? This is Ibn Web, Ibn Web, Quran is some here, official things thing I got going on. Essex County All Day Edition. Been trying to get them, got them. One, I want to say what's up to, to High Rod Williams here, just um, with the plug here. want to make sure I, I say that here. James Giss, those in the know, know him as Pookie Giss. Talented, talented, talented. Not only on the court, but just lived a great life. You know, um, East Orange is on whether it was hoops, whether it was other ventures that he's got his hands into throughout his life here. I'm just looking forward to just hearing a little bit about his walk. And we're just going to get to it. I'm going to be quiet on that note and get him on. Hold tight. Thank you for doing it. I know I done, this has been a hassle and everything else here. So I, I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. So you can see it. me now. I can see you. We rocking and rolling. All right. Okay. Nah, That's nah, cool. nah. That's cool. That's cool. Again, okay. I know all. Like I said, I appreciate you just doing this. And again, I know I think the communication's been there, so I knew it was only a matter of time. Also, so we good here. Everything, everybody's good. And I know you're just talking about your son, but everybody else in the family, everybody, everybody good, safe. Good. Everybody's good. Good, good, good. And mm -hmm. you might have seen one or two of these here. But as far as what I do, these, I mean, again, it's just my way again for me to even have you on here. Like I said, I'm so taken back. You know, just by having this opportunity, even the talking before all of this here, just, you know, the life you don't live, the things that you've done here. Like I said, this is a, a complete honor for me. So I just wanted to say first, thank you. And I'll probably thank you a couple of times throughout this thing, too. So I, I appreciate this. No problem. No problem. Uh, no problem. So I know East Orange is where those roots are from. Are you originally from there? Are you ended up in East Orange from somewhere else? How, how did it how did it all start? Well, um, starting out, I, I was born in Jamaica, Queens, New York. Okay. And then I moved over to Jersey, probably like around seven years old. Mm -hmm. So then I was down on the teen streets, um, mm -hmm. North 18. Well, first and foremost, when I first moved over, I lived on Amherst. Okay. I was up the way. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up moving down the hill on North 18th Street, then I spent like about 30 years there down, you know, on North 18th Street. Yeah. Family wise, how many siblings you have? Well, it's six of us. Okay. I'm the oldest. Okay. Uh, you know, um, I got three brothers and two sisters. Okay. Okay. Well, you guys kind of deep here. Even with that being said, childhood obviously being over there on 18th Street, you got Park Ave, you got a whole bunch of stuff going on. How was your childhood? Everybody says normal, but what was your normal? I mean, well, it it was normal. You know, it was rough as far as, you know, my dad, you know, providing for all six of us. My mom didn't work, you know. Mm -hmm. She was a stay-at-home mom. So, um, you know, it was rough for my dad. You know, but um, he did the best he can. God bless. Him. Yeah. May he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, other than that, it was normal to everyday things. You know, you got your your brothers and your sisters, and you know, y'all are uh, doing whatever to help mom and dad out. You know, as far as around the house, things like that. I um, pretty much was in sports all my life, so you know, I did uh, the sports thing. Um, and you know, my dad worked, my mom was at home and my brothers back then early on was, they all, they were younger than me. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was like the oldest and they kind of like, you know, looked up to me. And like I said, I was out there always playing football, baseball, basketball, all of that. So I was always running on, you know, going away to, you know, tournaments, basketball and stuff like that with, um, Mr. Miles and Mr. Oliver and those guys. So God, you know, uh, big up, shout up, and thanks to those guys, man, because they kept me grounded, you mm -hmm. know? Nah, nah, most definitely. And I know you mentioned Mr. Miles and all of them. I know well, what sport did you gravitate to early on here? I mean, I know eventually, obviously, basketball and what have you here, but I'm football, baseball, something else here, uh, what did you, would you like early on? Well, it's funny. You know, because um, in the beginning, I played uh, football, I played baseball, and um, and then also basketball. But I was playing all three, 
And then as I started, you know, getting a little older, I started gravitating towards basketball. And um, you familiar with Coach Kenny Macklin? Yes. Okay. He was like, you know, like I said, my dad worked a lot, but that was like my second dad, you mm -hmm. know, because he had me growing up in middle school, in the park, you know what I'm saying? Um, he was a, he came back home from college and he worked as a, you know, supervisor in the park. So he would coach baseball and all of that in the park. So I used to play baseball with him and um, he started telling me I was too little to play basketball, <laughs> stick with baseball. So I was, you know, I would play baseball. He was, I'm telling you, but I knew he played basketball and mm -hmm. he was like my idol. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to do the basketball thing. I knew he played basketball, so I wanted to do the basketball thing. So every time after we finished playing baseball and stuff, we would all go on the court with our cleats and stuff on and play. And he used to be like, you know, Jimmy Guess, I told you, you're too little for this, mm -hmm. you know. But um, I would say, yeah, okay. And I was good in baseball. I was good in football. But for some reason... I just was bit by that basketball bug, you know? Yeah. And uh, like I said, he played basketball, so I wanted to play basketball. Yeah. What position did you play in baseball? I played, sh um, first, I used to play left field. Okay. So I played outfield, and then he moved me into shortstop. I played third. I played mm -hmm. second, you know? So, you know, uh, he moved me around on the baseball field. Okay. So he must have saw something before you drifted over the basketball. You must you must have had a glove or you could hit or something here. Well, I you know, I can catch. Mm -hmm. I had an arm. And then also I was a decent hitter, you okay. know, but I ran the bases. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just I had all the intangibles. Okay. Okay. Now we're, we're bas so where you initially started playing basketball, like what playgrounds or just round the way, where did you start playing at? Well, it's funny because when I started playing basketball, it was in the park. Okay. So all the old heads used yeah. to, you know, teach me how to play. But again, like I said, Mac ended up being the uh, the gym teacher at the middle school. So when I went to middle school, he was, like I said, my baseball coach. Mm -hmm. But then he used to have an intramural um, basketball program that he had for the for all of us, all the kids that wanted to play basketball, and we used to play at the Civic Center. So being that Mac was the gym teacher, he used to do like write-ups on the teams. He picked all the teams and we had a league over at, um, you know, um, the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. So that's where we used to play at all the time. And then, like I said, it's funny because now everywhere I went, even moving over to middle school, I still had Mac there. Mm -hmm. You know, that was telling me I should play baseball. Mm -hmm. But then when he started seeing me play basketball and I was getting the write-ups and all of this stuff, you know, and then he was coaching the high school. So I was under his tutelage all of those years for whatever I did, whether I was in the park or whether I was in school, in health class, mm -hmm. gym class, or playing basketball or for recreation or whatever, Mac was always there. Mm -hmm. And then even with that being said, I mean, again, you're in a, you're in a nice size city here, so it's competitive even being as a kid here. So, I mean, you had to earn your stripes. I mean, just even probably get some playing time to even get get on the court here. And obviously, if it's pickup, you lost, you, you were sitting down for a minute, so you, you had to win. So that, that competitiveness, I'm sure, just, you know, was in you here. These kids don't even know, man, today. My sons, I tell them and everything, man. Back in the day, see, there was no going to St. Anthony, going to Roselle yeah. Catholic, going to prep school. Mm -hmm. You had to play in the hood against everybody that was from the hood. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you couldn't go to no other school. Like, if you lived down the hill or up the hill, like, in middle school, you had VLD for up the hill. Right. You had um, Stockton and all of them. And, and then you had the middle school that came along for down the hill. Mm -hmm. But when you went to high school, it was only you had to go to East Orange High School or Clifford Scott, mm -hmm. you know. So everybody that played basketball, it was there. It was no running. 
you know, whether you went to the parks every day or whatever, you had to play against the competition that was in the hood. And that competition was furious. Yeah. yeah. So it was it no doubt in your mind and no brain. You mentioned kids drifting off to these other high schools or what have you. It was a no brainer. You was going to EO. It wasn't. No well, I mean, you had to. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't go to none of those prep schools because they wasn't around at that time. Mm hmm. You know, everything was- But you had the, Catholic, the parochials wherever, though, right? Wherever you lived at, you had to go to school there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and nobody was trying, was looking at like St. Anthony's and all that stuff came later on. Mm -hmm. But when we were coming up from the seventies and all that, East Orange High School was yeah. St. Anthony's and Roselle Catholic yeah. because they was winning state championships every year. They was winning mm -hmm. the ECT every year. You had the greats playing like you had, um, you know, uh, what, you know, Tyrone Miles and all of them, but the, the Kenny Macklin played, you mm -hmm. had Harry James, yes. all of those guys, the greats from back in the day that mm -hmm. played, you know, Rodney Williams, uh, Mike Booker, Clee Eugene, Ron Harris, you know, mm -hmm. all, all of those guys, they played, you know, and they went to East Orange High School. So, when you was watching basketball, you was watching them that played at the high school level. So you wanted to go to the high school that they played for, and you wanted to go play for a champion, which was, you know, East Orange High School that was mm -hmm. winning back to back to back championships, state championships. Yeah. So that's where you wanted to be. Like now these kids, they'll go to St. Anthony's, they'll go to Roselle Cap because they want to play, go with the competition and where they think that, you know, the college coaches is coming and looking at it. Back in the day, we wasn't even really looking at that. We just wanted to go hoop. Yeah. You get the EO high. How was it for you? Are you you playing are you playing varsity? Are you playing freshman? I mean, you, what were we doing as soon as you enter the hallways? Well, when I got to um, high school, I came in, well, to back up for a minute, because all of us, we used to play in eighth grade and all that with the small fries small the little fry. yeah. and all of that stuff. So then by the time we got to high school, you know, you had went through, um, God bless him, Mr. Pitchford, God bless Mr. Miles and Mr. Oliver, you know, uh, that's my guy, Ali Bayons. So we played small fry and little lads with them. So you kind of knew what the teams and who was getting ready to go to the high school and what your competition was going to be mm -hmm. and going as a, as a freshman back then you didn't play varsity as a freshman. Mm -hmm. Okay. You had to go in and you had to play freshman, but the teams that played with Mr. Ma the guys that played with Mr. Miles and them when you was in the eighth grade, you know, those were the guys that pretty much was going to be the future at East Orange high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So nah, we played nah. freshman we went and we played freshman. We had a monster freshman team. We didn't lose. Mm. And, um, you know, me and my brother, you know, that uh, we just, we went into high school and we kind of like took it over as freshmen. And yeah. that was uh, James Giss and Robert Cole. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, before you get to Rob Cole, and, uh, real quick with the whole small fry, the, back then too, you guys ultimately went down to Trenton. Was that the thing that, even back then as well, because I know when I played, it was like, all right, we get, go down to Trenton for the weekend or Hamilton, New Jersey or what happened. Well, we but went to Hamilton. That's what I meant to say. I said Trenton, but I meant, Ham yeah. meant we, Hamilton. We, we went to Hamilton, and I didn't play the first year. Um, one of my other uh, teammates, Derek Williams, he always played up a little bit with the, with the older guys, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, he played little lad while we was on small fry. Then when oh. we graduated to be little lads, Dawu was like the veteran. Mm -hmm. So when we went down there, we had our team and um, we go, we play. Rob Cole and I are roommates everywhere we go. Yeah. Uh, so we go down there, we win the tournament. Um, we beat Hamilton um, and you know, it comes up to you get with the little lad tournament, they pick a Mr. Little Lad. Right, right. Okay. Right. So um, being a Dawu was there the year before, when it comes time, we go to the banquet and uh, they, you know, uh, up at the podium and they say, okay, well, the 1975 Mr. Little Lad and Dawu, Derek Williams stood up and they said, James Gist. Mm. <laughs> 
So um, I ended up being the first Mr. Little Lad ever from um, East Orange. Wow, wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that, that, that's a big deal. I mean, like I said, everybody who's who wanted that. Now, when, back then, I know you mentioned Hamilton. Was the New York teams out there during that time as well, too? Yeah, it was a few New York teams. You know, New York teams used to mostly, they, I think you might have had a couple of them come, but the New York teams really did the small fry thing. Okay. That's when okay. you played on the eight foot rims. Right, right. Yeah. They, yeah. 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 No, yeah I know. <laughs> but when we got down there, I really don't recall. Yeah, it was a couple of, yeah, it was New York teams too. It was a team from Long Island because the guy that played on the Long Island team, he was like, I think he had won Mr. Little Lad like maybe twice. Okay. Okay. And uh, he had went on to high school. So in my year, it was, um, you know, we had the monster team. We won everything. And like I said, um, you know, um, I was chosen to be Mr. Little Lad in 1975. Wow. Yeah. Uh, fast forward, you just talk about this high school, this freshman team. A lot of people don't know, Rob, he went to East Orange early on. I mean, you know, obviously that glory and everything else with the Orange later on, but it was you and him, huh? As far as that freshman squad? Well, what people don't know, which the word was, when we got there, we was like, I think we was like 30 and 0 as freshmen. Mm. And they had tabbed that James Gibson and Rob Cole would be the best backcourt ever to play at East Orange High School. That's that's big. Yeah, that's big. You know, and we played, we went through our freshman, we got ready to go into our sophomore year. We get ready to go to tryouts and all of that stuff. And then um, you know, Derek Williams Dawu, who I'm talking about, mm-hmm. uh, him and Mac was related. So Rob, you know, was feeling like he wasn't going to get his just due the way mm-hmm. they said that he and I would because Derek Williams was going to be in the backcourt with me and Rob felt like he was going to have to take a back seat because he wasn't from down the hill. Okay. Like, you know, Derek and I was. Mm-hmm. So the day of tryouts, we come and – we go to tryouts and there's no Rob. Mm. So Rob and I were like brothers and Rob didn't even tell me. Mm. And when we get to tryouts, the next thing we know, Rob transferred to Orange Mm -hmm. because Rob had roots in Orange. Yes. Family and all that. Where Rob lived out on Ross was like right on the borderline between Orange and East Orange. Mm -hmm. So he had cousins up there, you know, uh, that, you know, they told him to come on up to Orange. So he felt that way. And then we went from being brothers and supposedly being the best backcourt to ever play to basically nemesis on the court, which yeah. we were still we were still cool. But now everybody wanted to see that rivalry mm. James just play against Rob Cole. Mm. Now, did it happen starting 10th grade on? For the most part, you well, know Rob? It started 10th grade on, but Rob went up there and Rob um, got moved up to varsity as a sophomore. Mm-hmm. In the early, he played both. Okay. Um, I didn't play varsity in the beginning of the season as a sophomore. I got moved up by Coach Lester at the end of the year, mm-hmm. which okay. that's what was the norm back in the day, you know, whereas you never, you didn't play as a freshman. And in your sophomore year, you were getting moved up. I think um, Billy Marshall was the first one to play um, varsity as a freshman okay. for East Orange, and then Tony George. And then mm. that it started, you know, uh, snowballing from there. But you had Mark uh, Gray, mm. which we call him ATLS, because he ended up being the all-time leading scorer at East Orange High School. Wow. wow. Yeah. Like- now you did. You were Coach Lester. You just mentioned a bunch of names you ran off just a few minutes ago here, but this this how was it just being in his presence and just and, and playing for him? Well, I really didn't get an opportunity because when I got moved up, it was like the end of the season. I really didn't play. He tried to throw me in one game, and he was calling me to go in, and I got up because he wanted me to press. And by the time I got over to the uh, scores table to check in. I was getting ready to check in and they scored. Mm. 
and it kind of like sealed the game. Okay. So I didn't even go in the game, you know, mm-hmm. but that was the opportunity for Coach Lester. Then my um, junior year, you know, Coach Lester had left mm-hmm. and um, Coach Macklin took over. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but to answer your question, you know, everybody wanted to play coach for Coach Lester because he was that guy. He was winning championship back to back yeah. to backs, you know, always. And he just, he had that presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now, during the year, Coach Macklin, he's in, in the fold. He just gives you the ball. And he's like, it's just oh, no, team. no, 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 no. He, he still had Moochie, mm-hmm. Craig Moochie Houston, and Eric McGee. And, uh, you know, those were the guys that had earned their stripes. Kenny Daniels, Charles Blue, mm-hmm. George Silk Ramsey, all of those guys were still there. So, like, I was still, like, the young guy there, but um, – I've watched a couple of interviews and I've spoken to Mac and um, I really didn't play a whole lot. I got decent time, but they didn't give me the ball. And um, like Rob had the, Rob had the ball up there, like yeah. in orange, but with me, I didn't get the ball, but I've seen some interviews in the last few years and I've spoken to coach Mac and he said that, he he messed up. He apologizes to me, and I'm like, "Why?" He said, "Because I should have played you more. I should have started you." He felt as though me and Mucci would have been great in the backcourt, but you know, at that time, it didn't happen. So, I mean, it's all good. Yeah. Even during that time, what were you doing in the summer? As far as this, how was you working on your game? I mean, just playing against y'all going park to park. I mean, some of these individually. All, okay, that's all we did all the time for me being a freshman. And everything. I always went to the park. Like I played with Clee Eugene. I played with Ron Harris. Back then, we used to have, um, you know, pickup in the morning. You had to get there in the gym, open gym, pick up in the morning at like six thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. I used to go and get on. Like you said, the competition was so steep mm-hmm. that once you lost, you might as well get dressed and get ready to go to class. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> so we get in there like six six thirty in the morning. You start playing, but it was so many people in there waiting for next and all of that. So, you know, I've even played in the park with, you know, Ken Young, um, you know, Clee, Ron, Mucci, mm-hmm. Eric, like all of the guys that played back in the day. We just used to work on our games like that. See, back then, you go in the park at 10 o'clock in the morning. We don't finish up until 5 in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Like you play back to back to back at Elmwood Park all summer. Yeah. And then you go and play in your little summer league games, other places, but Elmwood Park was the spot. And mm-hmm. then you play in Harry James Summer League in the summer. So that's how you worked on our, on your game. We didn't have no trainers and all of that stuff where you going and you doing workouts with trainers and things like that. No, the old guys taught it. The old guys was our trainers. They told you mm-hmm. to work on your game, the old school guys, and they taught you how to play. Mm-hmm. Do you have a go-to move? You start developing. Did you have something you crossover? You cross, yeah. 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 So quite a few ankles you probably, you know, broke, huh? They say I broke a few. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know you mentioned even the, but the summer leagues again, as far as crossing those East, East Orange line borders here, as far as how was it you just competing against like some of the other schools? First of all, I know you had the Big Ten conference, so I know every every game probably meant something to you, but just playing whether it's the Norks or wherever, I don't know, Irvington's, I'm just throwing other towns out. But just just how was it just, you know, crossing those East Orange lines, playing other other competition? Well, the biggest competition back then, well, up until it used to be like, you know, some of the Newark schools with um the guys before me, mm-hmm. but kind of like when we got into where I was actually playing on varsity. Then uh, the teams that we would really go against was Montclair, you know, okay. uh, Craig Robinson, Craig Duncan Robinson. Hines, yeah. you know, God bless him, Bobby Bobby Hurt, mm-hmm. you know, um, those was the guys um, that we went against. It was tough games against East Orange and Montclair. And then, of course, me and my brother always went at it. And that's was always... And uh, I mean, the park would be jam packed yeah. with people wanting to see Giss and Cole play against each other. So mm-hmm. that was always from all the times when we separated and wasn't together anymore. It was always Giss against Robert Cole or everywhere you look, whether it's in the park. We would go down Newark to play in the Newark leagues and jokers would be like, 
Oh man, mm. Gibson Cole and them playing, and you know, um, <laughs> our all of our mentor, um, Ron Saladin Hatari. Hatari that was yeah. he coached Rob and them, and I played on some of those teams too later on. But in the beginning, I was playing with Rick Clark and the um, East Orange crew, and Hatari was coaching Rob and them with Hubert, Billy Coleman, um, Dow Butler, all of those guys from Orange. So that still was. We was um, going against each other, Orange versus East Orange in the summer league, and Orange mm -hmm. versus East Orange during season. Who got the best of who? Looking back, or was it or was it a is it a draw between you and Rob? Or, or... Well, I mean, I would say you know uh, we probably would both say the same thing. You know, Rob was tough, man. Yeah, Rob was tough, and Rob Rob would say the same thing about me, man, because like. We knew each other so well. And the reason why we could have been so great together was that we brought the same intangibles to the game. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Rob was a better shooter. I was more of a point, okay. okay, that can score. But Rob was wired to score, mm -hmm. okay? But both of us played defense. Okay. So when we played against anybody, the reason they said we was going to be the best was because you couldn't bring the ball up the court and guys would really not want to dribble the ball when yeah. he and I was on the court. Mm. They did not want to dribble the basketball. <laughs> yeah. And that's written in stone. Mm. Yeah. No, nah, that's, that, that's real. I know all. Well, playing beyond high school was uh, even obviously with these teams and everyone else that you mentioned, did you, that was an aspiration of yours? What to play after high school? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I went on, you know, did my thing. Uh, I went to a junior college because, to be honest with you, back in the day, Rob and I, like, the thing with, and I'm not going to blame it on that, we just wasn't really focused on, you know, and, I, and I'm going to blame a little bit on the system. Okay. They didn't really have us, you know, in um, public school, worrying about like, okay, you need a 2.0 or whatever to go to college to play ball and all of that. So, excuse me, our grades was was decent, but when we finally got that, you know, um, that shot as seniors going, trying to go to college, mm -hmm. it was like the public schools didn't prepare you for that. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to say, I can say that to say, our grades wasn't the best. So mm -hmm. I don't remember none of the guys coming out with me and all that back then going to big time colleges. Okay. You know, maybe one guy, two guys that played with me, Dennis, um, I mean, um, Kenny Daniels, Charles Blue, they were always on top of their um, studies. Um, you know, Junie Bradshaw, Clyde ended up going to DePaul Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Uh, Dennis Ross. Those guys kind of like got through when they were with Leicester because we was winning all championships and every they was winning all back back. So more guys was looking at them, mm -hmm. but kind of like with me, Rob and us, we ended up trying to like squeaking through with the little smaller, like Rob went to LIU. I ended up at Uppsala, mm -hmm. you know, um, Rob ended up being all-time leading scorer at LIU. I ended up being all-time leading scorer at Uppsala. Yeah. But, you know, the bigger schools and all of that. And also back then, they wasn't really taking little guys. Mm -hmm. So even after, you know, your time at, at Uppsala, as far as professionally, I mean, again, you're playing, you're doing well, regardless of where you're at, you know, no looks, any looks. I mean, we was just out trying to see what's going on and, you okay. know, pretty much trying to get a job and okay. make sure that you, 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 you straight. And um, I was fortunate enough. Harry James took me over to Jersey city to um, try out for a team overseas in Ireland. Okay. They offered me like, you know, like 16, uh, I think, what was it, like $16,000 for the year or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, for me to go to another country, you yes. know, like, no. And then I started doing other other little things and then mm -hmm. uh, ended up um, 
falling into the music business with my brother and them naughty by nature. So, mm -hmm. and I just, the basketball thing was over for me. But did you still play sparingly like in the summer oh, leagues yeah, yeah, and yeah, everything? Yeah. I still played in the summer leagues with Harry James and up mm -hmm. at the, um, the Pro-Ams and all that? Pro-Am and all of that stuff in Orange and in East Orange. I would do that, but I wasn't still chasing the basketball dream as far yeah. as being a professional athlete or going overseas to, because like I said, that really wasn't too popular in, in, in our community with like class of 79 and, mm -hmm. and, and 80 and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you mentioned, obviously, Rod, another guy that you uh, graduated with that year, uh, Raheem. Yeah, it was right. And Williams over at Shabazz, he was. That's my that's my brother. Yeah, yeah, yes. nah, nah, solid. Yeah, he's solid, definitely. Did you and ever we used to play summer league together? You that's played with him, Rob and I, mm. and Curtis Coach, Curtis Coates. We used to hook back up together and play in the summer. Yeah, and, you know, just you know, playing in the pro am and all of that stuff like yeah. that down Branch Brook Park. Mm -hmm. You know, with Duke and uh, Dot Lil Dot Wu. You yeah. know, that was the guys I played with in the summer league. I always played with Duke. I always played with Quatib, yeah. you know. So I had a couple of teams that I played with in the summer. And like I said, and Rick Clark, when I played in East Orange, Rick Clark was always coaching me and myself and Derek. And then, like I said, Hatari. And um, it was a brother named, uh, older gentleman, TC. He used mm -hmm. to coach the teams out of Newark. And okay. then, of course, Zaki was surprised. You know, so we all went against each other all the time yeah. with um, the guys from Newark and East Orange. You know, I used to love playing against my brother, Poopy Chapman. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I can only imagine these games. Wow. Yo, you, 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 you. Uh, these guys now don't even go in the park. Mm -hmm. You couldn't, you couldn't, yo, guys was on the, on the fence back then watching games, man. It was jam packed like it was yeah. a high school game back in the day like that. Mm. Question, and uh, this is more for comedy. Did you ever, did you ever lose to Scott? Do you recall? Clifford Scott? Yeah. Never played him. Oh, okay. Uh, that was the different conferences and all that. So y'all didn't scrimmage him or anything, huh? No, no, we never. But when we did go against Scott and stuff, no, he stars never lost to Scott. <laughs> okay. Hey, and I know you mentioned um being a musical family here, as far as obviously you mentioned just venturing off to doing some music stuff was it just bound to happen as far as just getting into the music game or was it just something that you you made yourself do well i mean you know when when naughty realized that they had the talent and the dj kg was my little brother yeah you know and like i said i was the oldest of all of them so i had to try to steer them in the right direction okay. to try to help and make sure that they straight with uh, getting into the music game because the music business is one of the most ruthless businesses there is. Yeah. So what I did was I kind of tried to spearhead that because in the first contract they had, they was in a bad situation. So I had to try to help get them out of that situation and get them on the straight and narrow towards the career that I saw them trying to do. And they was putting a lot of time in with that. So I felt like, you know, the music business was something that I wanted to try to venture off to and quiet is kept. I didn't want to work for nobody, man. You know, yeah, I couldn't see myself going and doing a nine to five. And the music game was where you can make some money at. So I went on and did that. But also I was able to watch Vin, Tretch, and Kay, my little brothers, and make sure that being that I was oldest to make sure that they were straight. Now, how did you know about all this stuff as far as behind the scenes, the business and everything that helped them out? To your point, you're talking about bad contracts or what have you here. So who taught you or how did you, you know, you self-taught yourself all this stuff as far as the business? self -taught, man. The street, mm -hmm. once you once you get into something, you just got to pay attention. Okay. And one thing I always had was a gift of gab, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, those guys was a little more reserved and a little more laid back. So I was the one that was always aggressive. So anything that I felt that was in the best interest for them, I would take the forefront to try to push forward to make sure that they got the best, even though I didn't know what the best was, but I know what they were getting was nowhere near the best. So I had to go and try to make things work for them. And then I eventually ended up passing them over to Queen Latifah and Shaquem, who I knew they were going to be in good hands with because that's what they did. 
And I just took a seat back and was the road manager. And then I was able to learn the business as a road manager mm -hmm. to continue to move forward and still be on the road with, you know, my brother and Tretch and, and Vin and take care of them out there while I learned the business, but make sure they was in good hands. Because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously starting off as new style and getting to where they was at. Yeah. Yeah. And now... As far as that goes, here you, you learning the business or what have you here. Now you started your own management company. I mean, how, how did I mean? Obviously, you had those guys, but you wanted to do um, managing other acts too, right? Yeah. Well, what happened after that was, um, you know, uh, I was road managing them, and then, uh, you know, they was like, I said, "Y'all go ahead and roll with Shaq Kim and them because they can help get y'all where y'all need to go." And then that'll help everybody out, the whole crew. So mm -hmm. I'm going to fall back. I'm going to take the road manager's uh, position. And then when we start grabbing our own acts, okay, coming up, I'll be the one that handles the new acts we're going to have. Mm -hmm. So that first act ended up being two young ladies from Temple University, Jean and Renee, mm -hmm. um, that ended up being Jeanne. Yeah, yeah. Wife's favorite song, Send Him My Love. I hate to just throw that out okay. there. That, okay. that, that, that's right. a joint. Well, that's, that's one of my favorite. That whole first album, I was a part of mm -hmm. that whole first album. I managed them on that whole first album. Yeah. Yep. Any parallels, the music game and, and, and basketball? Any parallels absolutely. you see? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, 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 you know, all entertainment, you know? And um, it's the same stuff. You got to be on your P's and Q's. You know, uh, nothing changed. You got to make sure that uh, that's ruthless. But dealing with basketball and dealing with these coaches and how everybody wants to be the person's handler and, you know, going and telling people like, oh, that's my kid because that kid doesn't have a father mm -hmm. or he grew up with his mother. You know, you get these guys that come out and they trying to, you know, get these kids so they can get something off of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was some, that's something that I never liked. And that's something that kind of, you know, hurt me with, with, with my son, you know, mm -hmm. um, was that people was, uh, you know, they looked at me as being there all the time and being uh, uh, a father that's there for his kid all the time as, a, as me being in a way of what they were trying to do mm. with not just my son or any kids that's coming up now with this AAU stuff and all of that. That's what it is. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, uh, call it what it is. You're a different complexion. You I mean, you're the best dad ever. You know what I mean? As far as that goes here, you know, so. Um, and you mentioned the whole fatherhood and having, having your children and like, being your own boss, I mean, that allowed you to freed up some time for you to, as far as spend some of that, that important parts of their lives as far as, you know, their growth and development here? Yeah, well, you know, the next, the next, the next uh, group that I had was, you know, and I still manage him now, is Jaheem. Mm -hmm. And um, when I started managing Jaheem, um, I was on the road constantly, and my son, um, Asante, he uh, was like about, you know, newborn and then mm -hmm. you know starting to grow and I decided that you know uh once he started playing sports and um I was like oh, you know what I have to kind of like pull back and be home and be a dad for my mm -hmm. kids you know Jaheen is out on the road and uh I'm out on the road so much and I'm leaving he's home with mom so now I need to start taking more accountability on being a dad and being home so he can see me because when you are in that type of business you can end up missing your kids you know mm -hmm. whole life you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying just traveling so much because that's what's needed you know on tour here different countries all around in a different state every night and all of that that can take its toll so I had to fall back and then again it goes back to my brother Rob you know Rob was coaching at that time Mm -hmm. My son played for Rob's team with Rob's son, yeah. um, RJ. Mm -hmm. Then it ended up being, you know, um, Asante and RJ playing against each other in high school. To, sound, sound similar. Exactly. And then they ended up playing together mm -hmm. um, 
at St. Anthony's, Asante senior year, where they went 32-0 and with Coach Hurley. Mm -hmm. And they um, won the tournament of champions together, you know. So it was, you know, back like old days, it just was the, the, the dads wasn't doing it. It was the kids. Yeah. That's probably a better feeling than you playing, I'm sure. Oh yeah, I mean it was it was great, and especially for him, you know, being at the relationship that Rob and I have and mm -hmm. still have, you know, mm -hmm. it was it was great that you know it came full circle like that. That not only was we nemesis, and you know, after we he left, and um, we didn't play together. Starting off, uh, R.J. and Asante wasn't playing together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Rob and I played our freshman year together and they ended up playing their senior year together. Yeah. Like you said, it comes back full circle. And exactly. I know, yeah. And even with the whole sports thing, like what has this given you that sticks with you to this day? Like playing sports, what has this given you? Well, I tell my sons and them this all the time, man. You know, the same guys that like raised us, you know, like I said, we were raised like, especially me, you know, Mac was like my second dad, mm -hmm. you know, so, and then I grew to have basketball coaches like Hatari yeah. and, you know, other guys like Duke, you know, and Dawu, those guys looked after me, you know, and I played for them in the summer, Kwati, you know, um, you know, I played for those guys. And then later on now, you know, uh, moving forward, like all my relationships and my business ventures right now, like I develop, I build affordable housing. I was gonna ask you about in that. In the yeah. city of East Orange and in the city of Newark. So mm -hmm. with me doing all this um, building and all that, you know, all the guys that coach me and all of that, they in those positions right now where they can help me with that. You know, mm -hmm. guys like, you know, uh, the mayors of Newark, the mayors of East Orange, you know, um, those guys know me from playing basketball and know me from music, yes. you know? Um, and when I go to walk in the door now, it's like I had to work for it, you know, because I get my projects done and I do what's supposed to be done as far as building affordable housing and my, you know, my track record speaks for itself, but my relationship is that I can go in and get a meeting and sit down with these guys because they know me from back in the day and they know my character, you know? So that really worked out for me in a great way, you know, because um, when I walk in the door, you know, sometimes it's a little bit different, especially in the development world. If, you know, we know uh, the other persuasion, you know, they, they got the money, mm -hmm. they got the relationships, they got everything going in their favor. So now with being a minority, with it's being a big thing now to make sure that we have a lot of minority participants when it comes to development. You know, now when I walk in the door as a minority, I have a track record. And not only do I have a track record in that, I have a track record as far as my life is concerned because they know me from back in the day when I played basketball mm -hmm. and I was with them so they can vouch for me. Yeah. And how important is it for you to hold down East Orange, North? You talk about the, the housing and everything as far as ensuring, like, you know, next folks in line are, you know, situated as best as you can put them in the situation to be to be good. Well, it's very important. You know what I'm saying? Because um, a lot of us grew up in the community and they want to stay in the community. But a lot of times when we get like other people that come in the community, they don't care about the community. And when I say that, I mean that they'll come in and they'll take an abandoned house or they'll take a house that's ran down and they'll slap some paint on the wall. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And put us in a house that wears within the next three to six months, you know, if your uh, plumbing breaks in the wall, now mm -hmm. you're not only paying a mortgage, OK, now you got to get this stuff fixed and you got to pay taxes. Yeah. So now that becomes a burden. And then now that family or that person, they can't, you know, they can't pay it, you know, financially. Mm -hmm. They don't have it. So now what they got to do is they got to walk away from the house and leave it. So now they leave in another blighted area in the community. So what I try to do with the affordable housing thing is I make sure, first and foremost, if I'm going to sell something to my people, I want to make sure that it's done from soup to nuts. I, okay. I gut it out. I make sure everything is brand new. But then also 
when I go, you can do seller's concession as far as a developer and a person that's building and on the housing side. So when I say a, um, a developer's fee, I mean, not a developer's fee, but if uh, when it goes in, I can do a seller's concession. So that means that if a person's closing cost is $15,000, you know, I can give them that so they don't have to pay that fee. Mm-hmm. And then you got grants and stuff that come to them on the front end where they'll get like a $10,000 grant towards um, down payment. So now that kind of helps them. And then now if you give them a nice house and something that they feel good about, then they're going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So that means that if you, when you're in the community, if you're looking out for them, that makes people uplift them and make them really want to, you know, do something with the property instead of going into a house that's all ran down and all that. So they feel like, Hey man, it is what it is, you know, but I try not to do that when I'm doing my, uh, all of my projects. Okay. And speaking of these stars, we talk about it here. I just heard um, as far as over there, right on Main Street here, they're keeping everything but shot right. The whole, I, I hear they're supposed to be building, you know, I guess some apartments or doing something right there in that whole plaza. You know, East Orange is changing. It's changing. I mean, I don't know if because it's on the train line, easy to get back and forth from the city or That's where, exactly where have you. That's exactly what it is. Okay. That's exactly what it is. And then everybody is tired of paying all that money in New York. Parking, mm-hmm. lofts is like 10000 you yeah. know, they come over here, they get a two or three family home. They live on one floor. The other two apartments or the other apartment is a sub rent. So that pays them. So now they're saving money. So now everybody over there is starting to come over here, you know. So now that's pushing our people out that live in the community. But they build in a lot of stuff in, um, in East Orange, in Newark right next to the, uh, the train, because now it's easy for these people to come over. And if they live in um, East Orange or Newark, you gotta remember it, it take them 10 minutes to get to New York mm-hmm. Yeah, on the train, yeah. mm-hmm. the PATH train or the New Jersey transit. It take them 10 minutes to get over to the city. So now they can work, come home, be home in 10 minutes. And it's cheaper over here. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Because we know what happens in and in, in Harlem and in, in Brooklyn, those those are mi- mi- those brownstones and all that are going for millions now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gripping some change. Yeah, I, exactly. I, yeah, exactly. What are we gonna do with with these parks? These these Elmwoods, these Wasessons, these over like I mean, they just it's crazy. Like you said earlier, like nobody's up in these parks. It, it's just, it, it's crazy. I don't I don't know what the change gonna be made, or is I don't even I think, or is it too late? I don't even know. I mean, I think that with the training and the indoor gyms and all of that is one thing, but I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing that we're dealing with, these kids don't have it no more um, where they want to play sports like that. Mm -hmm. These kids have been, you know, programmed to be in these telephones and on these video games. Mm -hmm. So that took over for what we used to do. Like we didn't have cell phones and all of that. So if we wanted to, you know, have fun, we went outside, Mm -hmm. you know, if you look at Christmas and all of that stuff like that, you get kids. Now, back in the day, we get a new bike, we get a basketball for -hmm. Christmas or whatever. We go to the park, we playing in the park with that Mm -hmm. new basketball we got, putting up a new net. You know, we riding our bikes in the park or up and down the block. We got a new football or whatever. We in the streets throwing the football, playing touch football and all of that. Now, everything that we get for Christmas is either is is computerized. It's a phone or it's it's a laptop. Mm -hmm. It's a computer, you Mm -hmm. know, so all of that stuff, the video games. So that make the kid, they wake up that morning, they get their gifts, they go sit down and start playing the video games or they on the phone all day. So if to answer your question, I don't know what we are gonna do about these parks because when I go in the park sometime, I see grass growing on the basketball court. court. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, definitely. How have you mentioned all this technology? How have you evolved it with it? I mean, have you been able to get with the times somewhat? I mean, I think basically all of us don't have a choice when they <laughs> almost don't have a choice. I say almost don't have a choice. Well. As you can see, I couldn't even get on here to start <laughs> this with you. <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah. 
my kids is into that. They help me out with this, but mm -hmm. I'm not a big computer fan. You know, I don't do the computer thing, even on the phone. I don't go through all the gadgets and all that. Like, I'm, you know, we old, I'm old school. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm old school. So, I mean, I get through with it because now with my business and stuff like that, I got to get on. I just got on Instagram because, you know, my son and stuff with his music and mm -hmm. I got to get up with time with the meetings and stuff like that. So I kind I just now bought this laptop, man. If you yeah. told, if we'd have talked about doing this, this interview maybe a year ago, we'd have had to wait, man, or I'd have been on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, <laughs> you that's, know? that's but, um, Yeah, you know, but um, it's, it's crazy, man. I just, um, I just hope, I hope and pray that um, they don't pop up and see what's going on with us with these phones and these computers and shut them down because we're going to be in trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, you no, you're right about that. And you mentioned the businesses, whether it's the managing, whether it's some of the housing. Uh, what other things, you know, my sharing, you got your hands in? Well, you know, I have my family. Um, mm -hmm. We have the record label that my son is on. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got all my family involved with that, you know, um, my kids, my kids, mom, you know, we all involved with that as far as the music, my son, um, I do the real estate. My mm -hmm. son does his own merchandising. We handle his merchandising. Um, you know, and basically those are the things that we're doing right now because what I try to teach them is multiple incomes, you know, because I had to learn that once I came off the road with Jaheen with music, I had to, you know, slide over and venture into the real estate, but I didn't wait until then. I was already doing that as far as one of my multiple um, streams of income. Mm -hmm. So I was doing the um, housing thing along with the music. So it was an easy transition for me, you know, because I had to still make the donuts and feed my family. Mm -hmm. So I've always been a, a firm believer of multiple streams of income. And I try to teach that for my kids. So anything I can get my hands in right now, I'm trying to get me a, a trucking business going on. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about venturing into this cannabis business, you know, mm -hmm. so I got a few irons in the fire, man, because I ain't getting no younger. And I got to make sure my kids are situated and straight for, you know, their families and the life that they're going to have to live well beyond the time that I'm here. Nah, that's right. That's right. Now, um, with these said, I, I usually put people on, I don't usually, I like to put people on the spot on the back and all of this here, random stuff, not so random. You good with that? Oh, no, no problem. Cool, cool. Uh, so one in the whip here, you prefer the parkway or the turnpike? Say that again. When driving, you prefer the turnpike or the parkway? Parkway. Great Adventures or Action Park? Great Adventures. Valleys or British Walkers? I like both, but okay. I, I I would say I I I would say uh, valleys. Yeah. Sandwiches or White Castles? I'm vegan, Ed. Pre-vegan. <laughs> Sandwiches. Okay, okay. How's so far here? Uh, Uptown Anthem or everything going to be all right? It's the, uh, 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 mm, I mean, I would, I would kind of lean towards, um, Everything gonna be all right because that was like that that was that was a heart. And then also that was a part of the music in the album. Um Uptown Anthem was basically a soundtrack. Right, to the to the juice joint, I think. To the juice joint, yeah. Yeah. And actually again, parting, I have my little my little groupie moment here. Like that first album, I know the album, that's that's probably one of my top five albums ever. So classic. Yeah, classic. Yeah, from uh, that strike a nerve, everything. Yeah. Yeah, classic. Not that, classic. And obviously that video, just shooting that around the way too, obviously touches everybody that's from, you know, that area, you know, as far as shooting that right in the stars, correct? I think so. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Basketball wise, um, Elmwood Park or, or, or Branchwood Park? 
Elmwood Park, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is Coach Macklin? What has he meant to you? Everything. Told you he's like my second dad, man. Mm -hmm. You know, everything I ever like, all sports, even life in general. You know, growing up, he was always there while my dad was working. You know. I was basically from sun up to sun sundown in in the in the in the summertime. Mm -hmm. I was with Mac. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then when I went to school, all day in school, I was with Mac. Mm. After school, I was playing with Mac. Yeah. Then that's in middle school. Then when I get to high school, basketball is my everything. And Every like Mac was playing semi pro at that time. I went to all his games. I used to go and let me come to all his practices. Mm -hmm. You know, then when I played for him, you know, it was just everything was there. You know, to the point where it's when my son started playing basketball, it's the first person I took took him to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and another one. Yeah. Can't forget Mac. Was number one. Mm -hmm. Mac part two. Cleo Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. I played for Cleo Hill. At, I was at, about at, to say, I, I didn't want to be remiss about playing Essex County. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Without He took care of me. He made sure that I was okay. And he taught me. He took my game to a whole nother level. He gave me a jump shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he gave everybody a jump shot. And I hear all of his practices was serious. Serious ain't the word. No, nah, but Max practices was ridiculous. Yeah. That's yeah. why I said leaving Mac and then ending up with Coach Hill, that was like a continuation of the movie. That was part two. Mm. Mm. And it wasn't that much of a fall off. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I'm not even going to say that. It wasn't a fall off. Mm -hmm. That right. was a continuation. Like, man, here I go again. <laughs> and you they know, both fall hard on you, I'm sure, right? Mm -hmm. They both fall hard on you because I'm not sure they, oh, they throw absolutely. the echoes. Yeah. I told you, Mac told me that, you know, I... He didn't think he thought I was too little to play basketball and I should stick with baseball. Mm -hmm. And then telling me you're not gonna be it in, in, in basketball to ending up my senior year, I was in, he gave me MVP. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Hill, I couldn't play in the beginning and ended up, God bless him again as well. Yeah. Um yeah. Tyrese Carter, you know, mm -hmm. that was my backcourt partner. And Tyrese Ooh. was getting 40 a game mm -hmm. a piece. Mm. Not 40 together, mm. 40 a piece. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I remember, I'll tell you a story. I remember I had like about, mm, I would say like 30 at halftime. Coach came in, the, and Coach Hill came in the locker room and he was looking at the book. And one of the trainers was like, Gis got 30 already. Coach Hill threw the book at me and said, shit, you should have 40 already. Hmm. Hmm. you know and yeah. it was like he didn't care how many times you shot the ball he just wanted you to make sure you played hard you yes. know and he took my game to another level because when you go when you first go to coach the first thing you got to learn is backspin on the basketball hmm. if you ain't shooting with backspin it ain't that and he's not going to let you play mm -hmm. unless you can shoot the jump shot as well he make you a triple threat Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to shoot it from the outside. You got to be able to get to the hole, and you got to have mid-range game. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. I grew up with the youngest there. He, he could shoot his butt off. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, nah, oh, speaking of that, you've got a lot of them. You got a lot of them. I don't know if something sticks out. Best game you ever played in your life. Hmm. Is the one that comes to mind something that just sticks out? It's a couple, 
but I think the one uh, that I would really say that um, sticks out is because it was a meaningful game. Um, when I played for Uppsala mm -hmm. and we went down to Roanoke, Virginia, and we was playing Roanoke College and they had not lost a game in their building in like five or 10 years. Yeah. And they had supposedly the best guard that everybody was talking about. And we went down to play them. And in the first half, I think I had like maybe four points or so. Mm -hmm. And this guy was talking smack. And they hadn't lost in their building. Yeah. And I think I scored 30 on him in the second half and had the winning free throws to win the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that might be, that might yeah. be the best one because up until a Maybe about 10 years ago, I've been looking for a video of that game and I could never find it. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. And that, that year, that after that game, we won and we went on and we went to the final four that year. Okay. Division three, final four. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, but if we would have lost that game, it would have never happened. But we came back and we won that game and um, we went to the final four. So I think that as far as what it meant, and, you know, what we had to go through to get there, I think I can put that up there because I was looking for that film for a long time and I <laughs> could not find it. Now, you mentioned team success here. Best team you've ever been on? Like, whether it was summer league, whether it was high school, high school team, best team you've ever been on? Hmm. I would have to say that the, the, the freshman team we had. Okay. Yeah. Well, you I would have to say that. Yep. I would have to say that because there was no flaws on that team. Mm -hmm. We had guys that ended up not playing basketball. You know how you grow up with your friends and some of them just start leading another, mm -hmm. down another path. You know, a lot of those guys, if they would have stuck with us on that team, we'd have never lost no games. Yeah. Rob left. A lot of those guys didn't play basketball no more or ended up, you know, quitting basketball for whatever reason. But that freshman team, God bless uh, Coach Hinton, um, that was that was a, that yeah. was a monster team. Is there a game you like to have back? Absolutely. Sound like you know this one off the cuff. Yeah. <laughs> Against. Valley. Was Troy we were, we would we would against Troy Webster and uh, mm -hmm. Jerry Galicchio. Um we was playing the ECT. We was gonna get back to the championship and it was supposed to be Giss against Cole in the ECT final mm. up in Seton Hall. And we was playing Valley. We was losing. We came all the way back. I think I had scored like about 10 or 12 points in a row, got all the way back. We was up one. It was five seconds left. They had the ball. They passed it the ball to a gentleman by the name of Hoffman in the corner. And I just said, ah, and ran at him. And the ref called foul. <clears throat> yeah. He went to the free throw line and made both free throws. Didn't touch him anything. Lost by one. Yeah. I didn't even go nowhere near him. Wow. I just planted my foot, like fainted at him. Yeah. Ah! And the ref called foul. Mm. Yes. And when the ref called foul, he made both free throws and we lost. And then the next day in championship, Rob and them lost to Valley and Valley won the um, ECT. They won it. Mm. Yeah. Your all time East Star starting five. And it could be positionless too. If that makes it easier. All time starting five? Your your all time. My all time. Your all time. And it could be, yeah, yours. Okay. My all time starting five. Um
Johnny Flood at center. Okay. Clee Eugene at forward. Mike Booker. That's uh, three. At forward. Okay. Now we want to, what is 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 this is error. yours your criteria however my er, my error this yeah, I'm going with your error. with your error okay okay I'm going because it, back any other it would have been Harry James you know um, Kenny Macklin all okay. that but I want to stay in my error okay okay so again Johnny Flood, Clee Eugene, Mike Booker mm -hmm. at the two guard I would say. I will put Ken Young at the two guard. But I will put Clyde Juni Bradshaw at the point. All right. Where you at on that team? You, you playing on that team? Nah, I'm not on that team. I'm coming, I, 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 I'm coming off the bench on that team. Mm -hmm. Who's the best ever for me, Starch? Hi. Right. I didn't see him play, but a, from what I hear, Greg James was the baddest to ever play the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, however you want to find made it, somebody who should have made it. Who should have made it? Yes. Clyde Bradshaw. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Her story what he about went, him. what he went and did at DePaul was, and again in my era, and seeing a guy, you know, uh, that grew up, like you know, not much older than me, and seeing him do the transformation of a shooting a shooting guard and dropping thirty in games mm -hmm. to going and being the number one point guard in the world in college at DePaul, that was incredible. Mm. Yeah. That was incredible. Yeah. You know, yeah. so when it come down to that, Clyde, Clyde was a bad boy, man. Mm. Yeah. Best part about being James Giss, you know, it's the first time I'm about to say Pookie. I did I just, uh, <laughs> best part about being James Giss. I mean, the best part about being James Giss is just, you know, everything always, is re you know, reverts back to, you know, my family, how they stood by me and how I continue that. You know, my dad, man, was about just a family oriented guy. Mm -hmm. And the best part of being James Giss is my name is James Giss Jr., first and foremost, mm -hmm. and to be a dad to my kids the way my dad was to his kids. Mm. No, that, that's real. Speak about that dad part. That's part about being a dad. Hey man, is just trying to teach, like seeing what's going on out here today and just trying to give my kids as much knowledge as I possibly can and teach them, you know, uh, not to make the mistakes that I made, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And making sure I stay on top of them because the world we live in today is totally different. Man. Yes. And um, I just try to keep them well grounded, make sure that they understand that they got to fend for themselves and always got to work hard. Like you can work hard. I got one that play football and do music. Mm -hmm. I got one that play basketball, play, you know, in the G League, mm -hmm. you know, but at the end of the day, you're still working for someone as far as the G League is concerned, which he's sitting and waiting for a call right now. And if he don't get that call, he has to know that he still has to go out here and work. So all the hard work you put in in the gym, if you work hard like that and you got a work ethic like I've instilled in him, you know, that goes across the board. It's not just yes. for basketball. It's yes. in life in general. Yes. Yeah. Nah, most definitely. Yeah. And speaking of life, a book on your life, what would you call it? Hmm. Man. 
full of a bu- bunch of ups and downs, man. But um, I'm still here, man. I done learned a lot mm-hmm. at, a, at an older age. And I've been through a lot when I was younger. And I just have grown so much, man. I I, I don't even know what I'll be able to title it. it. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Yeah. And speaking of that evolution, that growth in you here, like at this point in your life, what advice would you give that 17, 18 year old James Giss? What would this James Giss give that 17, 18 year old? What advice would you give him? Same thing I just now said, man, that I'm yeah. giving to my kids. I got one that's 20 and I got mm-hmm. a daughter that's 15, man. You just got to pay attention to what's going on out here and uh, stay on top. Keep your head on the swivel and mm-hmm. stay on top of your game, man. And you just got to make sure you believe in yourself, you yeah. know, because back then, you know, when I was 17, the game was totally different. Man. It's, and like now, you're 17 year old, 17 uh, years old, and these kids that's 17, 15, 14, they don't care about life. Yeah, they'll take your life in a second. You know, it's just I don't know what's going on, man. And they don't this this government and everyone, man. They don't have it. We're not in the cards, man. They don't they don't they don't they don't care about us, man. Mm-hmm. They don't want us here. So you got to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And if I, you know, can say, like, back then, those weren't fears that we had. You know, we was just living life yes. and like, oh, just every day was just like, okay, whatever. But now with me being older, I got to make sure my kids pay attention to what's going on on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So at 17, now I I would say, just making sure I pay attention to what's going on in the world today, because, you know, it's not even that you got to take it like the stuff that you eating, the stuff that you putting in your body, you know, all kinds of stuff is, is, is detrimental to us right now. You know, Mm -hmm. they telling you to do all kinds of things that, you know, may not have you waking up tomorrow. So it's totally different, man. Life is a lot more serious right now than what it was back in the day. Mm. No, no, most definitely. And I know um, you talked about them throughout, you know, as far as your parents here. What would your parents say about you? You being the well, oldest and everything, too. I mean, well, my family look at me now is, you know, I'm the, you know, I'm the leader of the family, you know. Okay. Not only is my name James Gis Jr., I'm the junior, you know, but they all look up to me as the older brother, you yeah. know. So I try to make sure I stay on top of that, man, and do everything I possibly can do for my family, man. You know, so that's including my brothers and my sisters, my mom, mm-hmm. you know, um, also my kids, you know. I have four. So I had to make sure I take care of them. And then I always got my nieces, my nephews, all of them know Uncle Pookie is here. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I'm basically at the Giz the family. My dad left me as the leader. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, nah, that, that's real here. And my my uh, my selfish, selfish question here. You gonna get you gonna get another Jaheim album? It's funny you ask that. I'm getting ready to drop a Jaheim single in another month. Okay. Okay. Because you know he got one of the best go-to when all else fails songs ever. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the whole just in case, you know, with your lady, when all else fails, you could go to that. Exactly. But, <laughs> you know, but, but in the wake of what's going on yeah. in the world today, you're going to be waiting for this next single. This next single is going to heal. That's my guy. This That's my single, guy. Yeah. This next single is going to shake the internet. All right. That's my guy. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm well, looking forward to he it. he just texted me, so I got to call him once we finish. Okay. And <laughs> uh, and lastly, here I don't know if you uh, the guests and naughty by nature family, everybody's all done with it here, but I don't know if y'all throwing the 30th or 35th uh, naughty picnic. I need to be in the building. 
Oh, without a doubt. I mean, they they coming up on their thirtieth, so um, mm -hmm. you know they putting some stuff together. I was talking to Vin; he told me that they was getting ready to put something together. I think Kay said the same thing too. So, you know, I'll make sure that you know you in the building. I'll keep you abreast <laughs> on what's going on, and we'll nah, make that, sure you we'll make sure you straight. No, nah, problem. that nah, that's peace. That's peace. But more importantly, I mean, thank you for this. Like I said, I'm. I'm talking to you know royalty here. Like I mean, I just think you know been around the world. I mean, raised your family, continue to raise them and guide them. I mean, I know as kids get older, it's more advice versus dictatorship. You know, as they get older here. But just in general, you know, seen some things, been through some things, and just even hearing you even early on, just be like you know what, you know, I wanted to be a boss. I wasn't. I'm not working for nobody, not saying anything's wrong with that, but that was the mindset that you had, and you've maintained it throughout your life here. And then the hooping and everything else here, like I've heard stories. I mean, it was just cool just to just hear, you know, you, you share a little bit of your walk here. Thank you. Thank you so much here. And I think it's just, I, I'm just honored to take it back here. I don't want to get into me starting to babble a little bit, but I just wanted to just say thank you, you know, so much just taking the opportunity. Again, I know we were talking, so I knew it was just bound to happen here as far as, you know, jumping on here with me. And this has been a pleasure. And I can't say thank you enough. Well, let me just say this, man. I really appreciate you, you know, because I've seen everybody else doing this and uh, I didn't get an opportunity. And um, I mean, I know uh, Cleon had been telling me for the longest that he wanted me <laughs> to touch base with you. I was running and running and running mm -hmm. and uh, I was just seeing more uh, people doing the interviews. I seen Matt. And, and, and all them doing interviews and stuff like that on, on uh, different shows and stuff yeah. like that, all talking about, you know, the history of East Orange basketball and everything. So this was something that I did want to do. I just had to make the time. And I'm thankful that um, shout out to Hot Rod for putting us Absolutely. together Absolutely. so we can go ahead and make this happen, man. But, um, you know, I, I thank you, man, because this is something I did want to do. And, you know, thank you for even... Uh, you know, thinking about me to get mm -hmm. on this uh, oh, without a doubt. You know, uh, interview with you. So that's 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 definitely a blessing, man. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you for everything, man. Thank you. Now you you learn how to you, you get tech savvy, everything. So we be good to go. Moving exactly, forward. exactly. So the next time you need me, it should be a little easier. Oh, just bring my butt in person. I alleviate all of that too. <laughs> That'll be great. All right. Nah, absolutely. Be well, and I definitely will be in touch. All right. Thanks, Ed. Uh, no doubt. Peace. Okay. Yeah. Peace. Wow. Right. This is why I do this. This has been a blast. You know, um, to have him on, just sharing a little bit of his walk, his journey here. Like I told him, he, he he's royalty to me. You know, um, and I really appreciate just hearing a little bit about stuff that I had no clue about. But that being said, I'm just gonna step away. I put my hand over my heart. That means I feel you. Yeah. <laughs>